Hello students, this is Professor Sansom, and I'll be talking to you today about experiment number nine. In this experiment, you will have 11 unknown solutions that you have to identify. By using pH tests, mixing the solutions with one another, and testing confirmation steps, you should be able to match each numbered solution with one of the listed chemical compounds. Also note that you will only be able to use pH strips and your unknown solutions as reactants. There won't be any other reagents available to you. For the pre-lab, you'll need to come up with your own procedure for identifying these unknown chemicals. The lab manual has an example procedure for identifying six unknown chemicals that we'll go over now. Suppose that we had to identify the following six clear colorless solutions. Hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide, barium chloride, sulfuric acid, sodium carbonate, and zinc nitrate. To guide us in our efforts to identify our six solutions, we'll create a flowchart to aid us in the procedure. We'll start off by performing a pH test. We can identify acidic and basic solutions based on their chemical composition. Acidic solutions contain hydrogen ions that can dissociate. Basic solutions have groups that can dissociate into hydroxide ions or carbonate ions, which will react with water, creating hydroxide. Our remaining solutions will be neutral. Note that with a pH test, you're only going to be able to identify things that are very basic or very acidic. So even though some of these other things might be a little bit basic or a little bit acidic, they'll be difficult to tell apart. After we've done the pH test, we'll need to continue identifying which solution is which. Let's start with the neutral solutions. Thankfully, we only have two neutral solutions, barium chloride and zinc nitrate. If we had more solutions in this group, we would want to probably divide it into a smaller group with another test before trying to identify the individual solutions. In this case, we can determine which solution contains barium chloride and which contains zinc nitrate because barium produces a green-yellow flame when burned in a flame test. At this point, we've identified two of our six unknown solutions. The remaining four are still in groups that need to be narrowed down. Since we've identified barium chloride, we can use it as a reactant for further testing of our unknowns. We know that if we react barium chloride with hydrochloric acid, nothing's going to happen. But because barium sulfate is insoluble, if we react it with sulfuric acid, it'll make a precipitate. This will allow us to distinguish between our two acidic solutions. Likewise, when barium chloride reacts with sodium carbonate, it produces a precipitate because barium carbonate is insoluble, but nothing happens when we combine it with sodium hydroxide. This will allow us to distinguish between the two basic solutions. You can use the chart in your lab manual to determine which combinations of reactants will produce a precipitate. These are based on the solubility rules, uh, I will mean insoluble, meaning a precipitate will form. S means soluble, so a precipitate won't form. And note that hydrogen peroxide doesn't dissociate, so it doesn't form a precipitate with anything, but it will bubble when you add it to a strong base. At this point, we have a good idea of the identity of all of our unknown solutions, but we have to perform additional tests to confirm the results. An example of a possible confirmation test for barium and zinc besides the flame test would be to add sodium hydroxide to both uh, barium chloride and zinc nitrate. Only the reaction with zinc nitrate should give a precipitate. There's also a list of confirmation reactions in your lab manual. For your pre-lab assignment, you'll create a similar flowchart and procedure for the 11 chemicals we're testing in lab. Ideally, you'll perform as few tests as possible in order to identify your solutions but you don't want to sacrifice the accuracy of your results. So remember that you need to have at least two pieces of evidence to justify your claim that you've identified a particular solution. Good luck.